Good morning, Faith Life Ministries partners and friends, family. I want to welcome you to the broadcast. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank you for joining us. I uh, This morning, I'm going into a teaching. I'm not going to be preaching at you or preaching to you. I'm going to teach you, teach you some things about communion and healing. I'm believing God right now this morning for healing to flow into you, anyone that will receive these things. Um, I believe, I know it'll happen. So I would encourage you to get a pen, paper, uh, get your Bible if you have it, but at the very least get a pen and paper, write down these scriptures so you can uh, go back and look at them later. Also, before I forget, I want to remind you that there's an important statement I've heard another minister speak, and I want to say it to you because it is Bible truth, that it's not what you get that matters the most, but what you keep is what matters the most. And according to Mark 4, the Jesus is granddaddy of all the parables. I call it the granddaddy because he said, he made the statement, if you don't understand this one, you won't understand any of them or the kingdom of God. And it was the one about the sower sowing the word. Well, God sent his word to heal us and to, to deliver us from our destruction. So, and in that parable, you find that only 25% of the people kept the word. In other words, they kept their healing or the word produced whatever word it was. So, and 75% 75, 75 lost it. So you can see that, and I have experienced that myself in my own life and ministry, that 75% lost their healing, but 25 kept it. And I'm believing that you're part of that 25% that will keep your healing. Because I know healing is going to come into you today. And all of them received it with gladness, but the enemy came. Now, this is not condemnation. This is the enemy's work. The Bible said the enemy came immediately to steal the word. So what I'm going to share with you, how do you keep it then? Well, Luke said a good and honest heart. I'm believing you have a good and honest heart. So then the next step would be keeping the faith. And that would be by you taking the notes going back over them in your Bible, go through there, look at these scriptures and feed them. You know, you may be strong. Anybody can believe God for like a house of fire for a day or two, but what happens in two weeks, three weeks, or sometimes even just a few days. So, you know, that's when you want to go back. When you start feeling your faith wane a little bit, you know what I mean? Get a little weak, get back in here, look at these scriptures and, or even go back and watch this video. That's why we offer CDs at the church, give them for free because that you need it. Feed this, feed on this word. And that way you can maintain or keep your healing, keep the healing power of God flowing in your body so that you are, you are absolutely complete and lacking nothing. So um, if you want, get take, take a minute, go get your pen and paper. Also, I would encourage you if you have it, if you don't, don't, no big deal. I'll show you how. We're going to do communion this morning. So get a cracker, get some juice, get some water, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay, I'm going to say that just so you have something. If you need a point of contact. But let me tell you something. This word is the bread of life. And this New Testament is the blood in established and written to us in Jesus' name. So you have, you have the word the bread, the body that was broken for you, the manna from heaven, and you also have the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. Personally, myself, I have been in position where I did not have any elements. I was laying in bed, paralyzed, in a hospital, in a shock trauma center over in Maryland, paralyzed. And I took communion without any elements, just the word alone. And I, God raised me up. God is my witness. I also have other witness. That was in an e Wednesday evening. The very next morning, Thursday morning, I stood up and they studied me for two days and sent me home. I'm telling you, healing is covenant. 
that we have a covenant of healing and healing can come to you in doing communion correctly. Amen. So I'm going to start with um, two major things that hinder uh, your receiving of faith or your receiving of healing because it stops your faith. And one is any condemnation, which would mean what well, condemnation comes from being guilty or sin. I want to share with you, Jesus' blood has washed away your sin and done away with it. So you have, you, sin is not a problem uh, with God anymore. Now, that doesn't mean you don't sin. No, what that means is when you do sin, you confess it, and Jesus is faithful, 1 John 1, 9, faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness or, or the guilt, because guilt will stop your faith. And well, what's he what's he just and right to? In other words, because he shed his blood, he has a right. He's justified in forgiving you. And when he returns, he's not coming back to judge sin because sin has already been judged. You might be thinking, well, uh, you know, I've done some really bad things and, you know, I've got too much. Well, I would have to say to you, you don't know the power of the blood. There's nothing more powerful that more strong, stronger than the blood of Jesus. It's able to wipe out, and it has wiped out all the sin of the earth. Glory to God. So what happens is your own heart, according to 1 John 3, your own heart condemns you. That's why we need to confess it. And he is faithful. He's faithful to the covenant. He's faithful to Father. And he's faithful to the blood to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Remember the paralyzed man that was born by four? Remember they ripped off the roof to get to Jesus? You're right. Remember and they lowered him down? Well, Jesus didn't look at him and say, be healed. No, he looked at him and he said, your sins are forgiven you. So there's a connection right there with carrying the guilt of sin and receiving your healing. He said, your sins are forgiven. Get it, take your bed up and go. So right there. So right now, I want you to make the conscious decision. Jesus's blood is greater than any sin. Okay. So eliminate that. Well, then we have the idea of, well, we know God can heal, but will he heal me? Well, I want to say to you, Jesus is the expressed will of the Father. Am I right? Jesus said, I've not come to do my own will, but the will of my Father. Jesus was, he said, I only do what, my, what I hear my father say, or I only do what I see my father do, and I only say what I hear my father say. He is the expressed will of the father. And he does not change. According to Malachi 3, 6, he said, I am the Lord and I do not change. And we also, so he hasn't changed. He's still doing the will of the father. And he also said, the Bible says he is no respecter of persons. So if he ever healed one person, and he doesn't change, and he doesn't respect me over you, or you over me, or us over anyone else, then he has to heal us all. Isn't that what the Bible said? Jesus, how in Acts 10, 38, how, God, how Jesus was anointed and went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil? See, so that eliminates the idea that Jesus has put this on you to teach you something because Jesus don't have sickness so he can't put it on you in the first place and sickness is the horrible offspring of sin so if sin has been dealt with and done away with then the, the, the power for sickness to remain on the born again believer has been defeated also so now it's a matter of us receiving what God has already given. Amen. Does that make sense to you? Glory to God, it should, because man, I'll tell you what, that is the whole problem with the body of Christ is given, is being able to receive what's been given to us. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to touch in one area that the Bible says why born again believers who love God are sick and some even dying among us. We're going to start in 1 Corinthians 11 
And we'll start in verse 24. I'm going to read it. I'm taking this nice and slow, I hope. You know, sometimes I get excited. Healing excites me. Healing should excite you because that is a signal of faith. That is a sign that you have faith. We have joy in believing. Glory to God. Why? Why do you have joy in believing? Because you know your sickness is defeated. <laughs> Glory to God. So that, follow with me in your Bible if you can. Um, and taking communion this morning in verse 24, he says, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So he's telling us to do a couple of things here. For one, he's saying this bread represents my body that was broken for you. Was his body broken? Here's another thing that establishes God's will for healing in you and me and every born again believer. In fact, every person on earth. Where and why, where was his body broken? Well, he was broken at the whipping post. He was whipped. Remember in Isaiah 53, by his stripes, we are healed. First Peter Looking back at the cross, looking back at the, the work of Calvary, said, by stripes, we were healed. So this was something that took place. But where did it take place? Where did our healing happen? Our healing did not happen at the cross. Our healing happened at the whipping post. Jesus did a separate act to make sure that our bodies were healed. He could have went to the cross and gave us a home in heaven, remitted our sins without ever going to that whipping post. So I want that established in you. He bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases, and by his stripes we are healed, or now were healed. So his body was broken. He's telling us to remember that. Remember that we were healed. His body was broken for a specific reason, for our healing. Because F.F. F. Bosworth, he, had, he wrote a book, Christ the Healer. Very good book. And he made a very powerful statement in there. Faith begins where the will of God is known. So right now, the will of God is being expressed. It's being, being known to you. His will is for healing. So right now, that your faith begin. In Luke 5, I, I love this verse. The, remember, the leper came to Jesus, fell at his feet and worshiped him because this states the, the, the place of many born again believers. He said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. See, and he's got faith or he wouldn't be there. He believes God can, but he's in the place of so many. Is it your will, Lord? Is it your will? You can make me whole. If it's your will. In fact, people pray that way because they're going off of what Jesus prayed in the garden. Jesus said, nevertheless, he said, Lord, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will. If there's any way, if there's any way, this, he wasn't having a healing meeting in the garden. So that doesn't apply to healing. But this one does in Luke 5. The leper said, Lord, you can, if you will, you can make me clean. So, and I love the way the New Living Bible translates or expresses God, Jesus response. He said, of course I am. And he reached out his hand and touched him. Right there, we have proof. It is God's will because he doesn't change. He's no respecter of person. If he healed that man, he'll heal you. So, okay. So faith begins where the will of God is known. So he said, do this. You remember that my body was broken for you. Do this remembering me. Now read verse 25. And in the same manner or the same way, he took the cup after supper saying, this is the cup. This cup is the New Testament, New Covenant. That's what New Testament. We have Old Testament, New Testament. That means covenant. That means, and uh, the simplest way to put it, covenant means a binding agreement. You entered into a binding agreement with God, right? And he gave you his name, the name of Jesus, right? And now we're in covenant with God. He said in the same way, this is the cup. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. He said, so now you remember my blood. This is the blood that establishes his new covenant. This is the blood that was shed for the remission of your sins, which is destroyed. The remission of sins was, I mean, the, uh, forgive me, the remission of, yeah, the remission of sin destroyed the power of sickness and disease, poverty and, and lack. It destroyed it because that was the very source of it. So he said, you remember that. I know for years, because of tradition, I took the communion cup or the communion elements, kind of clumped them in as one. Well, yeah, you know, I'm eating the bread and drinking the cup because I'm, I'm born again and my sins are forgiven. No, but he gave us two specific things to remember here. His body, which was broken for our healing and the establishing or the remission and the remission of sins. And he said as often, verse 26, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do something else here. This is verse 26. I want you to pay some attention to this verse and this word saying, you proclaim the name of the Lord. Does the Bible say anything about proclaiming the name of the Lord? Well, isn't that how you got saved? You proclaim Jesus as Lord of your life? Well, that uh, <clears throat> here's more evidence of healing because the word saved doesn't mean only being born again. Or it doesn't mean only coming into the kingdom of God. It means you've been, it means healed, delivered, preserved, provided for, kept. See, all that is tied up into that word of being saved or salvation. It's everything that God has offered us. So he said, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And I'm, let me tell you something about communion. You don't have to wait till Sunday to do it. You can do it four or five times a day. You can proclaim the name of the Lord as often as you want. In fact, I would encourage you to do it quite often. Okay, verse 27. Therefore, because of that, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, he doesn't say you're not, he doesn't say you're unworthy. He said, you're not doing it right. Okay. He said, it's an unworthy manner. All right. We'll be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. What he's saying is the curse that was upon the world already will remain. The whole world and everyone in it was fell under curse at the fall of Adam. And that's what he's talking about. The judgment of the guilt of Adam. Okay. Which was, we inherited being born into this earth. But we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. So verse 28, let a man examine himself and so let him eat the bread and drink of the cup. So examine yourself, okay? For let me put it to you another way, because a lot of people, because of tradition, we take and read these verses like we're judging sin, I'm going to tell you something. Sin has already been dealt with. Again, I say that to you in God's eyes. He doesn't look at you and see sin. Okay? And you will not find sin mentioned in this place. It doesn't talk about sin. It talks about not doing the communion correctly. Because sin has already been remitted you and I right now, if we're born again believers and we're walking according to the word, when we do mess up, I have messed up. I'm quite sure some of you have, right? We went to first John. We said, forgive me, Father, and now I receive my cleansing. So right now, you and I are without sin. So let's get that established, okay? We are sinless, sin-free, according to the new covenant in Jesus' blood, okay? So... Uh, where was I? Okay. This is, this is confirming what I just shared with you in 27, but let a man examine himself. Oh, that's where I was at. Examine yourself. Now, according to the old covenant and the new covenant, I'm going to, it's very simple uh, in some of the old Testament, te Testament scriptures. If we love the Lord and obey his commandments, 
and we walk in his ways, he said, these blessings will come upon you. He will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come in, blessed when we go out, go back to Deuteronomy 28. Now, if we don't, these, that means we are covenant breakers, okay? All these curses will come upon you. And he, he names sickness, he names lack, he names hardship, he names all kinds of works or acts of the curse. I want you to know, according to Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law so that we are blessed with faithful Abraham and we receive the promise of the Spirit. So we have been redeemed from all of those curses. That's the curse. He's guilty of the body and the blood. We, we're saying it's no good, okay? And we're accepting the judgment of the world. That's what the previous verse was talking about. We're doing it. So he let him examine himself. All right, now examine myself. Let me get back to that because I keep getting off of it. I'm going to examine me, my body, since we're focusing on healing this morning. And this covers every area of the blessing or every area of the curse, you could say. Is there any curse operating in my life or in my body? That's what, he, that's what he's talking about here because he's talking about healing and the remission of sins establishing the new covenant. So I've got to look at and examine. Is there any work of the curse? Am I in lack? Am I in pain? Am I, is there sickness in my body? Are my fingers not working right? Are my knees not acting properly? See, that's work of the curse. So let a man examine himself to make sure, all right, I'm gonna get rid of all this. Because he's watching over his word to perform it. We're going to get there eventually. Try and take this slow so you can follow me. Put it down real simple. I'm hoping to anyway. So let a man, so let's look at it in that light. Let's examine myself. Do, am I in need? Let's put it real simple. Am I in need of healing? Am I in need of blessing and provision? Okay, so I'm exam okay, yes, Lord, I'm in need of healing. So I'm examining myself. Okay, now he's, let's read on because he's going to say why born again believers who love the Lord are, are sick. But let a, man, let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy, not doing it right, eats and drinks the judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now he's singling out again the covenant of healing, not discerning, not remembering, not knowing why we're eating that bread, which is his body that was broken for us. It was broken for our healing. For this reason, verse 30. Now, if the Bible says it's for this reason, it is for this reason. This is why many are weak and sick among you and many sleep or die. The Bible says that people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, the reason you wouldn't do this right is because it hasn't been taught to you. You don't know it's lack of knowledge. He just said for this reason. So let's go back to Exodus. Let's examine this covenant. For this reason, many are weak and sick among us. And it goes on to say, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Of course, that would mean sin. But here he's not talking about sin. He's talking about your healing. He's talking about proclaiming your healing. I'm going to proclaim the name of the Lord. And let's go back to Exodus 12. We'll start there. Glory to God. I believe we've established the will of the Father. God is very big on covenant. Otherwise, he wouldn't name these two books, Old and New Covenant. Of course, the New Covenant is better than the Old. If the Old was good, how much better can the New be? Exodus 12, verse 5. Now here, this is symbolic. Now, I want to make this statement. Of course, you know, this is when the Israelites were delivered out of Egypt. They're going to eat the lamb of God, the lamb. If the symbolic or the type can heal, what about the real? Glory to God. This is a type of Jesus. Now we have in the new covenant, Jesus, how much more, how much more powerful is this healing promise 
or healing right, I should say. It's not a promise. It's now become our right. He's talking about you shall, verse five, I'll just read it. Now you should, your lamb shall be without blemish. He's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the lamb of God, right? You should take it from your sheep and then you kill it at twilight. You shall take, verse seven, you take some of the blood, put it on the two doorposts. The Bible talks about putting it on the doorpost. That's on the doorpost of your mind. You put it up here. I have been forgiven, remitted from sin in the name of Jesus. This blood covenant has been established in me. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. So he says, put it on, man, put it on. And then he says, don't eat it raw. Don't eat it boiled in water. I'm down in verse nine. I'm skipping through this for time's sake. But you eat it roasted in fire. What's that mean? Jesus went to hell and he paid the price for you. Right? He went there. He suffered. and But he took the victory and came back, rose from the dead, glory to God, and gave it to us. So that's what he's talking about in fire. And he said, you eat it all. You eat its head. You eat its entrails, its legs. In other words, don't let any of it go to waste. You got to remember you know, we seem to let things slip. Well, it's been that way for a long time. You know what I mean? I was hurt and, or I was born that way. And, uh, you know, it's just the way it is. Do you remember Jesus? They delivered, God delivered, I don't know how many millions of people out of Egypt. You mean to tell me there wasn't none of them born with any defects? I mean, it said there was not one feeble one among them. Not one, not one that was weak, not one that was sick. All of them were healed and made whole. Now you think about it. these were slaves. They were beaten. I mean, there's Uncle Joe, man. He got, he got jumped by four or five guards, man. And they beat him up, broke his legs. He'll never walk right again. Now he is not feeble. He's coming out of their hole. That could have happened when he was a kid. You know, like, and they're, they're malnutrition, what do you call it, mal, they didn't have enough food. I mean, they were weak, but God healed every one of them. He, in other words, he said, don't let nothing slip. I mean, to tell you, I, I believe this with all my heart. Even if you are born blind, you can cut, you can take. He said, you eat it all. Don't let none of it go to waste. Eat it all. Get your complete restoration. Get your complete wholeness, Right. He said, for I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Ever heard the word I am? Jesus, the Lord said, I am. What's that mean? I am all that you need. I am more than I can say to you right now. I am. And in verse 23, now listen to this. He said, for the Lord will pass through, pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood, you got the blood on, put it on. You got the blood, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to destroy you. Glory to God. This is my house. This is housing my spirit right now. Glory to God. He's not going to allow the destroyer. And in verse, in chapter 15, flip on over there. I believe it's 15. Yeah, yeah, I got it. He's not going to allow. See, he's going to make judgment. Why? Why? We're going to find out right here. God made covenant with them. And he said in verse 26, okay, and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord God and do what is right in sight, are you doing that the best of your ability and knowledge? then it's not accounted to you as sin. You're doing the best that you can. And if you're not, just repent right now. Say, Lord, I'll make the change. All right? So this will include you. All right? And do what is right in his sight. Give ear to his commandments. You're listening to his word right now. You're going to do what it says. And keep all of his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians for. Now this is a covenant word here. He's giving a covenant name. In the Hebrew... He, well, let me just read it in English first. I am the Lord who heals you. This is where we get the covenant name Jehovah Rapha. The Lord, your healer. He has made covenant name with you and given you, given a covenant name. I am the Lord, your healer. He's also given us the name. 
I am Jehovah Nisi, the Lord your banner. That means I am your victory. The word, the word healer means also means to it mean, healing means to restore, to make whole again. So no matter how how bad it's been, no matter how long it's been, he's saying I am the Lord who restores you. And you might be thinking, well, that's for the Jews. Well, I can turn you over here in verse Corinthians. Or is it 2 Corinthians 1? No, wait a minute. That's the one. He said, no, no, Romans 3. Romans 2. Romans 2. He said that we are, I, I, and you know, I agree with you. Yes, it is for the Jews. But look what he says in Romans 2. Verse 29. But he is a Jew who is, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly. And the circumcision that is of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter. So in other words, it's not because we obey the law that made us a Jew. It wasn't because I was born with a natural heritage of a Jew. I have been grafted in. I have been born from above. I'm a Jew in heaven. Glory to God. And you are too because you are children of the most high God. You come into a new family. We've been circumcised in the heart. So we are the, yes, it is for the Jews. And thank God we're the Jews. And we've got a name. Do you remember over here in 1 Corinthians 11? He said, as often as you do this, you proclaim the name of the Lord. Now, the name of Jesus, I want to say to you, includes the name Jehovah Rapha. Because all of the Old Testament names which God give when he made covenant, right, is all in the name of Jesus. Because in Revelations, it says the entire word of God is the name of Jesus. Jesus is the entire word of God. So every word he ever spoke is in that name of Jesus. So when you proclaim, now I'm just going to share with you something that I did personally. When I took communion, Diane and I, I had some things that I had been letting slip. In other words, I've been tolerating it. I know you know what I'm talking about and didn't do anything about it spiritually to stand against it. Well, you know, I knew I overworked and I knew I did this, you know, so, you know, and the enemy's smooth. I mean, he's just like that. He's a liar though. So we're going to do communion right now and we're going to examine our lives, our bodies, not in sin, because remember, sin's already gone. And I'm going to proclaim the name Jehovah Rapha. Oh, I started to tell you what I did. I took, last. it was just last week, Diane and I, we got together, and we took communion over, and we proclaimed the name of Jehovah Rapha. The Lord, my healer, my restorer. Now, I got to say, I believe in miracles. I know God works miracles. I've experienced many of them, witnessed many of them, right? But his number one way is seed, time, and harvest. In other words, we're planting. We're sowing seed right now. We're sending it forth. But I'm believing right now this morning that miracles are going to happen too. What happened with me that night, uh, last week? I noticed the next day restoration was happening. And the next day, even more restoration. I am just about, I am 98% free from all of the pain that I had. Glory to God, right? And he, he does according to our faith. The important thing is we got to keep going back and feeding our faith to keep it going. And I have a shared, a shared testimony. About 10 years ago, I was paralyzed from the chest, chest down. This is when I took communion without the elements. I was laying there in that hospital on a Wednesday evening and I took communion. I, I didn't have the elements. I didn't have the, in other words, a cracker or the, or the grape juice or the wine, whatever you want to use. So I said, well, his word was sent to heal me. And I take the word of the New Testament and I received it right then. And then I said, I take the cup the New Testament shed in his blood, establishing of the new covenant in his blood, and I received it. 
And as I said earlier, Thursday morning, I stood up for the first time. Miracles. I have witnessed miracles. I have seen, witnessed healings. And it's according to your faith. And I'm believing for the miracles this morning for you. I don't care what kind of ailments you have, what kind of problem you have. I'm telling you, there's nothing bigger than the word and the blood. So this morning, we're going to proclaim. I'm looking for my, my verse. Proclaim the name of the Lord. So join with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I remember that your body was broken for me. My sickness, my calamity, my sorrows, my grief, my peace was laid on your shoulders and by your stripes I have been healed. Lord, right now, Lord, we are receiving the breaking of your body for the establishing of of our covenant of healing to come upon us right now. We receive that in the name of Jesus, proclaiming your word, your name, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer, our restorer. We proclaim the name of Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our victory, who always leads us to victory. We are proclaiming the, Je the name of the Lord, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our, our peace our wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. Lord, we remember you and the sacrifice you made. Now receive the word that heals you in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let him minister to you now. Let him minister to your heart. Glory to God. Someone with eyes that have not been seeing correctly is being restored right now. More than one. I see one happening out now, right now, instantly, and the other one to, by tomorrow morning that you will see perfect. Your eyesight will be restored completely by tomorrow morning. Glory to God. In other words, I'm saying it's progressive throughout the rest of the day and through the night. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I see back pain and joint pains diminishing Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, has you proclaimed, Lord, I proclaim it on me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach, to teach, to set free, to heal and deliver. I set right now, I loose healing. I loose the power of the anointing that removes every burden and destroys every yoke of bondage in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Sickness is satanic bondage, and you ought to be loose today. Hallelujah. And Lord, as we receive this cup, we establish the New Testament in your blood, in our lives, in our bodies, in our minds, destroying the very hold and the very ability of sickness or the work of the curse to remain in us, on us, or about us. In the name of Jesus, now receive the cup for said for the remission of sins and the establishing of the New Testament. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now I want you to remember taking communion and proclaiming the name. This is not about sin. This is about your healing, your restoration to God's will, what he intended from the very beginning, that it be well with, it, with you, that you prosper and be in health. Amen. Glory to God. Now, please re watch this video again. Get strengthened. Go back to it. Revisit it. It's free. <laughs> okay. And it's the word of God. Don't take my word for it. Find it, search it out, get the will of God, let it be established. I can give you lots of scriptures. Uh, 
I, I, I'm just going to wrap it up and quit now. God bless you. Oh, please, please. I want to encourage you. All right. Send us. Let us know. Send us. Write us. Uh, look us up online. Put it on Facebook. Give us your testimonies. Okay. It's an encouragement for others. This seed has been planted into you. And like in Mark 4, let it grow, produce fruit, and let it, that, let it strengthen you. Let it come up and produce to where, remember in Mark 4, it talks about, I know it takes a little bit of faith. It'll grow up and become greater than all your problems, but you also give branches. In other words, you're going to give rest to other people. You'll be able to share this with others so that they can take their rest in what you've learned and experienced from God. Amen. From the word, because it's real. It's true. So let it do that. And you become a strength, become a minister of the gospel in this covenant of healing. Amen. All right. God bless you. We love you and uh, hope to see you hear from you soon. God bless. Okay. Let me find a button here.